Hello there. It's time for most things Kenobi. Shouldn't it be all things Kenobi? Hmm. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and all things Star Wars. I'm your host, Leanne. And I'm your host, Lauren. And during our hi- hiatus, D23 happened. And in fact, I knew like three, four people who went to D23. Lucky b- Oh, really? Oh. Yes. <sighs> yes. Someday. <laughs> I know. And they had a grand old time. The pictures looked hilarious and fun. And they sent me videos as things were happening. Yeah. But one of the things that happened was a lot of news on Andor. And that's what we're discussing today on this week's episode is... While a lot of stuff went on, Lauren and I are especially large fans of the show Andor and season two, which is the final season, because, oh, my God, we're <laughs> we're coming up to Rogue One. Yeah, because season three is Rogue One. Yes. So <laughs> and then that's the end of the series, <laughs> if you will, for all of them. So <laughs> Yes, <laughs> permanently. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> you'll need to drink a glass of wine and cry in the shower and then that's we'll all. move back on with our lives yeah <laughs> but we're just going to talk about the shit that came out about it and did you happen to see the trailer that leaked i did me too yes. sorry and sorry disney <laughs> i know it wasn't my friends thank you to whoever had the nerve to like film because I've seen those yeah. security guards come up to people yes. and tell them to take their phones out and they yep. delete the thing right off their phone. Yeah, they're, I've seen they're it. They're not it's joking San around. San Diego Comic Con. They don't, yeah. they do not f*** around. So. They don't f*** around. I've seen it at uh, Celebration too, actually. Yeah. With certain things, they are particularly aggressive about it. <laughs> and, and they I mean, should be. I mean, yeah, they're paying just a lot of say. money. Yeah. To create this, and they wanted it. The whole point is to make it special for first of all the people who paid to be there, and second of all, a surprise for you when you finally get to see the finished product. Yes, but but that being said, everything in these trailers when they are released so early are just like they're non con, they're inconsequential. They're yeah, yeah, a snippet here, a flash there, this and that, you know. And so, nine times out of ten, it's right from the first episode or two. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Which I do Which, like. Because I don't want to know. I don't... I want to exactly. be surprised by all of it. Yeah, keep it as... Like, let me not... Because I... <laughs> this sounds so arrogant, but I, like, I put shit together so fast that yeah. I see something and I'm like... I just watched some old trailers from the 90s the other day. I was, like, just going through a list of some, like, actors that I love and, like, watching old trailers. And I was, like, from the trailers, I can figure out what your plot twist is already. Yeah. Yeah. Don't show me. Don't show me. Right. I don't want to know the surprises of Andor. Even though we are going to talk about our predictions (laughs) today. Well, (laughs) I I have to say, I, I am so... So excited that one of the Flash reveals in that teaser trailer is that Krennic is back. I know. I am so (laughs) psyched for this. He (laughs) is up there on my list of, like, favorite bad guys ever. He's just a mess, and I love him. And we we love (laughs) Ben Mendelsohn. We love him. We do. Yes, we do. And, And that cloak that cape of his him and lando are in a, a f- their own category of capes i know never seen without one i think no. lando is seen without one but krennic never seen without yeah a but cape. do we remember those scenes no no no, no. no. <laughs> the cape steals the show that's it <laughs> so i'm very i'm very excited and and, and to that point the leaked trailer people reacted as I would have. They screamed when they saw him. Yeah. And that's very, that's heartwarming for me because that character deserves it. And Ben Mendelsohn as that character also deserves it. So I'm very, I'm very excited. Yes. Thank (sighs) you. 
The whole show. I, everything looks I so Oh good. my god, I know. Even just the way they edit the trailer together. Yeah, it's real they, serious. They, Yes, and the music is, like, pulsing. It mm-hmm. makes me feel like I'm going to have an anxiety attack. It's fantastic. Yes, we love anxiety attacks. <laughs> Star Wars! <laughs> because we know what the ones that are not related to Star Wars are like, and those are way less fun. Yeah, and if you're going to be a Star Wars fan, you just have to get used to having anxiety attacks. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Comes with the territory, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you, but... Listen, Settle I in. Know, <laughs> I know you want to talk about it, so let's just talk about it. Cassie and Andor has a man bun of sorts. Does he? Yeah, he has the his. <laughs> no. Oh, whoops! <laughs> no, doesn't his isn't his hair like sleek and pulled back? It may not be in a technical bun, but it's yes, in a mini it is pony. Slicked back. Yeah, it's just slicked back. I didn't notice. Oh, it oh it's not a, a pony. Bun. Am I? Did I jump straight to man bun? Because I actually love those. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, I wouldn't Oops. be upset. Sorry. <laughs> it's just Look, slick. there was some movie where Matt Damon had extensions put in just so he could have a man bun, and I was fine with that. I would so. never argue. Never. <laughs> Obi-Wan in a man bun. There was art of that, right? Yes, there yeah. was. I'm remembering it, it. Yes, it was very good. Mm-hmm. Not not the topic. I just want you to have your moment <laughs> with, a, with a slicked back <laughs> Cassie and Andor. Yes. If you want Dude. to have that moment. I want to have that moment because have it. <laughs> we saw it at Celebration. We did. We did. And I have not been able to find it ever since. And finally, someone filmed this and I took a screenshot of it because I was like, here it is. <laughs> this is the so, thing. Okay, so it's like not a, a man bun. A if, you, if you took a screenshot, <laughs> then it's not a man bun. It's not a man bun. I it's don't just think. my I subconscious a... wanting a man You bun. want it to be one. <laughs> well, there's also this art of Anakin who has like half of his hair pulled back, kind of like Ray, you yes. know, and he has a little yes. twirl of a man. Listen to me. This is what we're here to talk about. Shit. <laughs> man buns. Look, I'm actually going to our website so I can find the post. If you haven't been to our website... It's mostthingskenobi.com, where you too can double check if characters have man buns or not. It's true. And it's uh, it's been a little refreshed. Yeah, I actually posted a picture of it. It is not a man bun. It's just very long hair. Yeah. Okay, so it's slick back, long hair. And awesome. he's dressed in like the Star yeah. Wars version of a tuxedo. Yeah, so he's like somewhere doing something. Yeah, I, I have this <laughs> What like... a synopsis. <laughs> He is somewhere being somebody doing something. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast. We will see you next time. Season two of Andor sounds promising. That's our prediction. Somewhere doing something. This is why we get paid the big bucks. Yeah. Make our observations. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know. I have a headcanon that... He is the person who goes and extricates Mon Mothma once the Empire mm. realizes that she's mm. in trouble, or like she is the trouble. I don't think that's going to be the case, because I think they talk about it in Rebels, that Rebels, like the Rebels crew helps her once she's like on the run. Mm. But I really want it to be Cassian, because they clearly have some weird like trust between them by the time Rogue One comes around. Why couldn't all of those roads intersect, though? I suppose they could. I mean, Chopper is in Rogue One for a minute. <laughs> he is, in fact. <laughs> yes. And Hera and Zeb are at a mm-hmm. briefing of Princess Leia's in a comic. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. So it is possible. There's it's a lot possible. that I would really... <laughs> I mean, they could cram so much fan they won't. service it into <laughs> they this, won't. but yeah, this Tony, Tony Gilroy is so opposed to it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he sh**s right on your, your joy. <laughs> this is why we are here for it, though. That's what sets this show on a different level, and that's why fans appreciate it, because we get all of this other stuff that is not tied in. We get we get one way out, one way, had nothing to do. Right. That whole right. arc is like its own iconic thing now. <laughs> Yeah, because Andy Serkis is like, it's just 
gift Genius. to humanity. He, he really is. <laughs> he really is. God. I love him so much. Like my heart gets full every time I think of him because he's so talented and funny and just kind of a pleasant human being. So not that I know him personally, but you've met him personally. I have. I made him laugh. <laughs> yes, I made <laughs> Smeagol Gollum <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. I just really need to know that his character made it off that f- Narkina 5, whatever it's called. Yes. I need to know. They they said that he is still alive. They confirmed that. And I'm afraid to see what what happens to him if they I show it next can't, season. I, I won't be able to be okay with any other thing than he made it off there okay. Like, he I was know, late. Me too. But he made it. <laughs> you know, somebody <laughs> came and got him. He a floaty device and... <laughs> yeah. Just anything. Anyway. He deserves... Oh, my God. I know. We could, we could talk about this I know. all it's, day. Yeah. I do have a prediction related to Narquita 5, though. Oh, let's hear it. Yes. Okay. So, Diego Luna and Tony Gilroy keep saying you're going to see Rogue One in a totally different way after you watch Andor Season 2. Which and can go... scares me. Very badly or very yeah. good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm <sighs> really nervous my breath. <laughs> because, yeah, it's like one of my favorite movies ever. Just not yeah. even just a Star Wars movie, but I, I love Rogue One. Yes. I don't Same. really want to see it differently. But then I suddenly had the thought that what if we find out, or they find out, Cassian finds out, that mm-hmm. he and Melshi helped build this thing that he's been trying to track down, you know, he, in the Rogue One novelization, they call it, it's basically a weapon of mass destruction, but he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know yeah. it's a Death Star. Yeah. But like, what if somewhere along the way, he finds out what Narkina 5 was doing, and he and Melshi realize that they helped make this weapon, and that's why at the end of Rogue One, they're like, we will do whatever it takes to stop it, because we helped create this yeah, horrible thing that destroyed Jedha and... I don't think it's far-fetched because the last scene of Andor, literally, is them pulling away from what we find out is what they made. Right. Which makes it so tragic. Right. It's so oh. tragic. <laughs> well, it's like if you layer that in there, so if Cassian finds out and he knows... What a horrible place it was that mm-hmm. they were trapped in. Mm-hmm. And how they literally worked people to death and yep. mind to them left, right, and center. And they were timed. They had to do it. Yes. Like nonstop. And that poor old man, the yes. old guy. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And like just the loss of morale yeah. and lives and time yes. <laughs> and hope. Yeah. Which is what rogue one gives is hope yes and leia that's the last thing that leia says in rogue one so it's literally full circle i could see this happening yes yeah and i kind of want to see it happen like i want to see that moment of realization with him and like melshi too because i really like melshi (laughs) at the same time Jin doesn't know this so if cassian and his band of brothers there decide to join her after you know the council meets if you will Mm-hmm. And doesn't immediately agree to it, but then Cassian says, we'll do it. They know, but Jin yeah. doesn't. I wonder, like, Jin goes on and doesn't ever learn it, but Cassian holds it in. I could see him doing that. That would be part of his character. Yeah, I just saw an interview recently where they both said that their characters are very private. That, mm-hmm. that they don't share verbally a lot with each other there's just a lot of like shared emotion with each other which i thought was kind of super interesting yeah so i guess it, it wouldn't be surprising that he's like i don't really know you why would i tell you oh 100 percent. all this backstory but it's like the reason why he and all of those people were willing to commit it was basically um what's the word when you go like a wall basically he mm-hmm. mm-hmm. was going against the military directive so if they lived he could have been court-martialed and so could have melshi yeah. and then you you can i mean i mean if you're basing this off american military you know whatever you can get court-martialed and 
thrown in prison or shot, I suppose, if it's that bad. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, they so blew like, up instead. So they went out yeah, in a blaze so of glory. Literally. Yeah. So be- basically, they're willing to risk like throwing away their positions mm-hmm. in order to do this thing in Rogue One. It must have been for a really good reason, not just Jin, which I'm sure, you know, she's a huge part of it. But I do think it's like more to do with like something more personal, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I could totally see it. Yeah. And that would be an acceptable way of seeing Rogue One differently. Yeah, that wouldn't upset me. That wouldn't upset me. <laughs> I don't think it's okay going to be that. something so dramatic because that's not, it doesn't, to, Tony Gilroy's about subtleties, pulling mm-hmm. things together, weaving them, and letting people come to conclusions with not so obvious, like, in-your-face plot things. Yeah. So I do hope that it will be more subtle, or at least to a point where it's not so like, oh, that's it? You know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, that's not going to be the reaction I expect to have from Tony Gilroy and company. <laughs> no, I expect to be entertained and mildly horrified. <laughs> yes. Yes, all the things we love. <laughs> but but we get K2SO, finally. I thought he was going to yes. come. Oh you know? I can't so wait. I can't I wait. Really, I really can't wait to see how that happens. Me thought too. we were going to get it in I, the first season, but... Please show us. I know. Like, don't just don't just don't just start the next block of episodes where like Mm-mm. they're together. Like, explain how they meet, please. <laughs> well, interesting you say that because each, so th- the first three episodes happen, and then it skips a year, and the next three episodes happen, and then it skips another year. So it, each set of three episodes progresses one year in time. Yes, and that's how we get yes. to Rogue One by the end of this season, which is crazy yes. to think about. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> True. So I had another thought, though, like, because if Rogue One, you know, obviously they, they've said this over and over, that the end of Andor is going to be Cassian getting on the ship to go to the Ring of Kefreen, mm-hmm. which is the first thing we see him do in Rogue One. So that means by this point, he already knows that Jin exists because mm-hmm. he knows all about Galen Erso. And all about mm-hmm. Saw Gerrera. They already have that information. That means they also know her false identities. They know mm-hmm. that she's on Wobani already because they have a plan for extracting her while Cassian's gone on the Ring of Kefreen. Yes. So, like, I really want to see him learn about her. And there's a chance we might see her, like, a little snippet. <laughs> this is this is what I really hope They throw in and they don't show us in any previews. They don't talk about she's not in any press junkets. Keep her a secret until we get... Because I have goosebumps. It happens. (laughs) And this is legit because I love Jen. I love... uh, What's her name? Felicity Jones. Felicity Jones. So sorry. Um, I think it would be fantastic. And you and I reviewed the book, Rebel Rising... And Saw Gerrera, we saw him in the trailer that was leaked. All of that's going on in the background and leading up to this. So this would be a fantastic time to just give us a little bit of gin. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a lot. Like, I don't remember how many years pass in Rebel Rising where she's 16 i guess mm-hmm, right when mm-hmm. saw basically abandons her but i don't know i don't remember how old she well is then she Rogue goes one. to the jail and that's where we end yes. up so right so like if there's four years happening right it's four years happening in andor season two like there mm-hmm. is a real chance that her story could overlap in small ways yeah oh absolutely they already they already know about saw so by yes. the time andor season one is happening i'm pretty sure Jin is still with saw right or is she gone by then no 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 she would have to be in there so uh so do you think that luthan has his talk with saw in season Mm -hmm. one great great moment in time such a good scene oh my god one of my favorites yep did we talk about whether or not Jin was around at that point i don't think we discussed that we discussed the scene but 
I'm not sure because I would I would have to go and research how old Jin is. I feel like she's probably 21. Yeah, so old, she. But I'm not sure. I feel like Luthen would know about her, regardless. Yes, I feel like he would too. He knows too much about too many people and keeps too many secrets, such as Galen. Right, and I I feel like um, Saw and. Luthen have an extended history. Mm -hmm. That didn't feel like people who had kind of just met. That felt like people who knew each other for a while. Right. And, and, and (laughs) Saw Guerrero is not letting anyone just show up. Exactly. And give him (laughs) at the same time. (laughs) There has to be some sort of level playing ground, some respect there as different as their approaches tend to be like in Mm -hmm. the end. Not so different, but different in the way they approach it. There, there's a level of respect that I think allows <laughs> that allows Saw to open the door to someone giving him shit and then walking away without dying or losing a limb. <laughs> right. And I think I think he would. I think there's a chance that Jin is in this. Luthen has to know. Yeah, I feel even if they don't show us, she's yeah. gonna get mentioned. She yeah. has to be. Don't leave us hanging. With, f- don't have us hang. I, give me a second. I'm emotional. <laughs> don't give us Bo Katan, and give us all this Bo Katan, and never once even mention Satine. Just don't do it. Don't do it with Saw and Luthen right. and all these people and Cassian, and not mention Jin. That would just not. Yeah. You're gonna give heartburn to every single person who ever respected you, Tony. <laughs> Just saying. Star Wars heartburn is a specific illness. Yeah. <laughs> we need to find our antacid. It starts with Obi-Wan not mentioning Ahsoka to Anakin. It continues with Bo-Katan not mentioning Satina. We are not going to follow yes. through with yes. all these people, Saw and the like, not mentioning or showing us Jin. Okay? That's all. That would be so f- tragic if they she's the f- <sighs> she's the reason Rogue she's One it happens. <laughs> i know that the show is called andor but there would be no andor without Jin urso exactly give us a yeah. f- set of episodes called urso <laughs> please <laughs> oh man i'm here for it let's do it <laughs> i'm gonna edit this and laugh my off <laughs> when I re-edit this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <sighs> okay. I'm calmed down now. I just had to get that out. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Uh. Anything you know else? else? I really I really do want to see Tarkin again. Oh, they can do that easy. Except that they're getting sued right now for using Tarkin's likeness in Rogue One. Like, how many years has it been? 10 years? 15 years? Whatever. Peter Cushing has a friend who says that Peter Cushing said to him, don't no. let them use my likeness. No. And Star Wars, like Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. paid the, the Cushing family mm-hmm. at the time of Rogue One, got their written permission. Mm-hmm. And, and they story. said they even had, well, they even had, like, something in his contract from the 70s. Mm. So they're pretty sure they're going to win the lawsuit, but I it made me sad because it's like now they're probably not going to even risk putting him in Andor. <sighs> Which really bums me out because Tarkin and Krennic together is like oh. <laughs> my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> if If a mess and a mess could come together... <laughs> That is the mess I would want. Yeah. Oh Um, my god. It would be a battle of the wits. It's so fun because Tarkin is the only one who can put Krennic in his place. Yeah. And even then, it doesn't always work because Krennic is just so petulant. He is. (laughs) He's a... He... (sighs) I mean, he had the gall. To ask Darth Vader, like, would he be recognized? Bitch, bye. Yes. <laughs> I love him just for that. Are you a 
fool? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the thought that, like, he clearly didn't realize that if <laughs> anyone was Darth Vader's quote-unquote friend, <laughs> it was really only Tarkin. <laughs> His only friend in the universe. And that goes way back. Way back. Way back. They do. All the way to the Citadel. Mm-hmm. So, mm. sorry, Krennic, but... Sorry, Krennic. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sorry, Krennic. Yeah. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <coughs> She's done it again, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I didn't know that talking about Andor would be this hilarious. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like, it's just so many stereotypes in this movie that it's just, <sighs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> I'm excited. It's scared. I have a feeling it might be. A little bit harder to watch, maybe. They might push some boundaries, but... Good. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Set the bar. They, they've they got that creepy torture guy is in the trailer again. The one who had the, like, yeah. headphones that he put on um, ooh, Bix. Ooh, ooh, tell me what you think about um, the mother sitting with um, Cyr- Cyril... Oh, Cyril and Cyril's mother? mother, his oh, mother. Cyril's mother. Yeah. What do you think's going on with that? Because he's got he's got a new outfit, he's got a new haircut. He's obviously moved I up. I don't know. I feel like is he undercover? Could be. He's clearly. Whatever happened between him and Deidre at the end was weird. Yeah. And I'm sure True. there's weirdness going on. <clears throat> Whether she's using him or, God forbid, they're in a relationship that would p*** me off. I don't That'd think so. weird. It, I, mm-mm. But he's stalking her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's already weird. It, yeah. Yeah. I want her story to continue at the same pace that it was because she's fantastic. Her character yeah. is intriguing. There's a lot going on there with her, and I think that that has a lot of places to go, and I don't think a relationship is one of them. I don't think they'll do that. I really hope not. Maybe they'll continue his creep factor, you know? I feel like she would be willing to lead him him on. Yeah. yeah. Yes, to use him, because she is so heartless. True, and she will, if she sees an opportunity, she's going to take it. Yes. And he's going to allow it. So it could be a relationship of convenience for both of them. Yeah. One one sided without it knowingly. Like he doesn't know that it's one sided. He just wants to be adored and thanked for something. And she just wants to get her (laughs) objective met. So maybe they come into a business partnership of like, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine, which yeah, I could see happening. I'm I'm not ready to watch them destroy all the lives of the characters I really like, but I no. know they're going to. Hey, we got to go there. We got to go there. I know we got to steal ourselves because it's coming. Like Luthen, the he's his monologue basically made it clear that he's not surviving this. No, and I'm not gonna be ready when it happens. I don't care if I yeah. know it's coming. It's gonna hit. It's gonna be. I'm gonna cry. It just let's just knock it out right now. Leanne's gonna cry. You're gonna cry. I know you are. We're gonna be. Yeah. This is gonna be one of those moments where we're like, we text each other. I'm not ready to talk about it yet. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. I'm not ready to talk. Okay, me neither. Like, we yeah. stayed up till it came out at like 3 a.m. Whatever. Or we'd set alarms to get get up here in this yeah. household because mm-hmm. it was so good. And now everybody spoils everything. If you wait until the yeah. morning, you will it will get spoiled. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm not ready. I'm not ready if something terrible happens to Brasso. I can't handle that. <gasps> I didn't even think of him. Yeah, like Brasso and Bix. Yeah, yeah, the OGs from home. They make it seem like Cassian and Bix might be having a relationship, but honestly, I think Brasso is better for her. <laughs> Yeah, they're like the two 
offshoots of Cassian that should end up together because it's just safer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Cassian yeah. is on his own doing his own thing and he belongs with Jin. So fall back, Bix and yeah. Barrasso. And maybe they can like just take B to is it B2? Oh, yeah, little, oh no. Yes. God, don't bring him up. Oh. No, but like they can take him and go live in some safe corner of the galaxy yeah. and just uh-huh. live under the radar forever. That'd be fine with me. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about the droid. I wonder if B and K will meet. Oh, tiny little droid who stutters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Giant sassafras. Giant back talking. <laughs> <laughs> They're like... C-3PO and R2-D2 of they are. of the pre-pre-times. Oh, pre times. <laughs> polar opposites, and I would love to see their, them meet each other. I actually can't wait to do the episodes for that show. This is going to be insane. Yeah. It's going to... I suspect it's going to be really intense. It's... Yeah. I'm not... I'm not... This is not going to be easy. Mm-mm. When does it come out? They said 2025. Do we know? I don't know if they've said anything official yet. I know. I, and I think I it keeps either. getting pushed a little bit. It got oh, pushed because by of the, the writers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That happened last strip. year. Which, take your time. Don't rush something just to get yeah. it out. We've waited this long. We're good. <laughs> I would guess either May, because they what always I'm thinking. do something in May, or like December, because they often then will again, keep shows. Is. The Mandalorian and Grogu movie, is that not slated for May of 2025? They're not going to compete. So. Good question. Is that, that came being out on filmed D23. already? That, I don't recall what was said. That would be and, crazy fast for a movie like that to get made and Let me double finished. check. Oh, it says 2026. It's 2026. The yes. So perhaps we'll get a spring, like a May for Andor, and then... That's 2020. I know it's 2025. They said 2025. They're going to want it to be a thing at Celebration. Oh, when's that? That's J- that's uh, that's Japan, isn't it, isn't it? Yeah, it's in Japan. I think, isn't it springtime, like April or March or April, something like that? It says right here, is set for the first quarter of 2025. Okay, so I would I would bet money May. May of 2020. May is usually when they do shit, so. They always release a movie in May. Yeah. Like, when they do their movies, it always comes out in May. At least the new movies. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm excited and uh, afraid. <laughs> I want it, but I don't want it. I don't want it to be over, <laughs> but I really want to know I know. It that's, that's the thing. But it won't... It'll... It's already over because we Rogue One. So let's just I remind know. ourselves like it's already that's over. True. There's still plenty of room for more loss and suffering, though. Well, that's <laughs> that is that is hashtag sorry, Krennic. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Star Wars staple is loss and, and tragedy and pain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I I really hope they work Marva in somehow with flashbacks or something because I just f-ing love Fiona Shaw. Uh, they should stream her stream. They should stream her her final goodbye. Yeah. On like rebel TVs across. Yeah. You know. I love that. Make oh, make her a stable. Please. Make Leia see her. Make her inspire Leia. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That'd be awesome. All these strong women in the galaxy just kicking. Ass. Oh, that's f-ing awesome. <sighs> Yeah, I'm excited for Andor. (laughs) Season two. Me too. So our question for you this episode is, what are your predictions for Andor? Or what are you looking forward to seeing, even if you don't have like some crazy theory? Are there characters you're excited about? Is there a plot line you're hoping will, you know, reveal itself? Tell us in either the comments on Spotify, you can tell us on our DMs on social media, you can post it on social media with the posts that we put for the episodes. Just tell us your thoughts and we will read them on the next episode. And our next episode is a tribute episode to 
James Earl Jones. He passed away on September 9th of 2024 and the entire Star Wars community felt the loss. And he is an absolute living legend here now and always. And he brought to life one of the most iconic and scary bad guys of all time. <laughs> And we're going to honor his legacy and what he's done for Star Wars and films in general next time on Most Things Kenobi. In our last episode, we discussed if Star Wars characters were Greek gods and goddesses, and we went through a list of them. But then we asked our listeners who their favorite Greek gods and goddesses are and what characters they thought a Star Wars character might be. But no one answered that question. And that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) It is okay. But we did get lots of comments about how everyone was really happy that we were back, which thank you yes. so much. That's really kind. It is really and nice. We, we got comments saying that it was like being with friends again, that Aww. it was a comfort podcast that they had missed. And then we got quite a few people saying that your size snoodles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to know what they say. what they say. <laughs> uh, let's see. Laura said, it's so wonderful to listen to this again, and I'm so glad you two feel better. Sai Snoodles was my favorite, purely because it was Sai. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she is the epitome of lust. <laughs> <laughs> and Z messaged me today saying that she was listening on the train on the way to work and almost, like, burst out laughing at that part and had to, like, hold it in. So. I can see this happening, in fact. <laughs> That brings yeah. me joy. <laughs> As I said to Z, our job here is done. So Yes. Yes. You are always welcome. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you, guys. That's That means a lot. It means a lot because, I mean, there's been some shit, and you guys are the heart and soul yeah. of this. So thank yes. you. Exactly. And thank you for joining us here on the Most Things Kenobi podcast. We appreciate every single one of our patrons and are grateful for your support. If you'd like to support the podcast and become a patron, head over to the Most Things Kenobi Patreon. And you can always follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Threads. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. If you enjoy our podcast, feel free to rate us on Spotify and Apple. And as we mentioned earlier, if you need just one place to find all of these things, head over to mostthingskenobi.com. So until next time, my space twin, may the force be with you. Always.